Video games have evolved over time. What started out as simple entertainment has grown into a medium capable of delivering deep artistic and emotional experiences. You keep finding something to fight for. Lots of people play games today. In fact, 59% of Americans play them. That's over 155 million people. 48% of gamers are female, and only 26% of gamers are under 18 years old. 63% of parents today say video games can have a positive effect on their children. Despite all that, games still have a long way to go. They've often been blamed for causing laziness, addiction, or violent behavior. I've spoken with some people who are passionate about games in order to find out what it is they love about them and why they play. Scott Johnson is an artist, podcaster, and avid gamer. He covers a lot of video games in his award-winning shows. When I was a kid, I really only wanted to draw and make radio. For some reason, those were my two obsessions. So I recorded a lot of stuff on, on audio tapes, and I drew on everything, and I loved video games. So those were my three pillars of interest growing up. And part of that was fueled by the fact that my dad ran a bunch of arcades kind of grew up with, you know, having a Pac-Man in the basement and a battle zone in the garage. And that was just sort of my, uh, you know, my environment. As a kid, I played a lot of role-playing games, uh, Secret of Mana, Chrono Trigger, uh, Final Fantasy III. I loved those games. They, they encapsulated uh, wonderful storytelling with wonderfully catchy and emotional music. And so for me, it was a full experience. And to this day, when I'm playing games, yeah, I like to sit down and I like to have fun, but really what I'm looking for is to capture the, the same emotion and the same involvement with the story that I felt as a kid. Video games have become extremely artistic in recent years. In 2013, Journey was the first game to receive a Grammy Award nomination for its beautiful soundtrack. It's not about button mashing or trying to kill people, but about kind of just listening to this really pretty soundtrack and getting your character through this journey. I never felt like so many emotions from a game until I played it. Games just provide this, this ultimate way to tell a different kind of story, a different visual story, a, uh, a way of creating mechanics and, and things that play to our very nature as human beings. And it's a combination of art and science that no other medium really has. It's an entertainment that you participate in. It doesn't just get thrown at you and kind of pass itself by. You have to um, be part of the experience. Despite their beauty, not everyone sees games as art. In 2010, renowned film critic Roger Ebert posted a blog to his website claiming that video games can never be art. Which is ridiculous for him to say that because you could have said, well, film will never be art like a play is, or you could say a play is never going to be art like cave drawings are, or you could go back as far as you want. I think video games sometimes are not considered in the same sphere uh, because they're dismissed just as entertainment. They're struggling for mainstream acceptance. Um, and you're starting to see more and more acceptance where you're seeing people who are playing, you know, pocket games and things like this, your, your casual gamers who just sit down and play something on their phone. But video games as a whole, um, they're still screaming for attention. Look at me, I'm significant. You know, look at me, I can be art, I can be this. And I think at some point video games will need to transition beyond that to the point where they become so artistic that somebody who sees it from the outside can't deny its its quality. Like the game The Last of Us from Naughty Dog. It has one of the best stories in, in recent memory. Come on baby, please. I know baby. Look. It puts you through a lot of emotions and what if, if you were in this scenario, what would you do? It tells a wonderful, intricate story of a, uh, a girl and, a, and uh, the main character acts as kind of a father figure to her. That's everything you were hoping for. Takes her under his wing and protects her in, in an otherwise really sadistic world. Come here. Come here. 
Hurry up. Come on. Come on. Hey there. <laughs> the bottom line is anything we create that makes us think, challenges the way we think, um, those sorts of endeavors of all kinds, and video games are among them, are artistic expressions, especially now when people can take tools uh, and, and for less money and more out of just pure expression can make experiences that you're not going to get anywhere else uh, that move us emotionally. This happens in video games um, that blow us away artistically. And if those aren't, if you're saying those people aren't artists that are coming up with that stuff, if those writers aren't artists who are writing this content, then you're just doing the entire industry and you're doing the great human endeavor a disservice by saying it isn't art. I don't even get worked up about it anymore. I hear that and just go, eh, whatever. That's someone who doesn't get it. Video games still get a lot of criticism for violence. Violent video games have encouraged the killing of innocent people for sport. Video games to me are, are murder simulators is what they are. Video games have become a poster child for violent behavior and things where the research doesn't necessarily pan out on long-term effects. It seems like kids are just less violent than they've ever been. Although it doesn't seem to affect long-term behavior, recent studies have linked playing violent video games to increased short-term aggression. And some people will say, well, look, video games turn people into violent, into violent people, you know? But if you look at sports, uh, even somebody who has played sports, like they've gone on the court, played basketball or something, they will also experience heightened aggression afterwards because they're in, the, they're in that mode. I'll admit that there's some games that uh bug me like violence still bugs me you know there's there's a there's a threshold but for me it's the story i want to figure out what's the purpose of all this like why is he having to do all these things people are still they still talk this way they still say it's too violent they still say kids are going to be lazy or they're going to be violent or whatever these sort of blanket fear statements from parents and, and so on has dissipated and will continue to do so why well it's the same reason that in the 40s and 50s, comic books were, uh, you know, stigmatized and turned into this evil influence that we're going to destroy our children. Who was saying that? A bunch of old men in suits who don't read comic books. What happened to them? Well, they die off, and the generation who grew up reading comic books are the people in power today. <laughs> and those people in power today know that comic books didn't mess them up, and they don't care. Therefore, nobody's going after the comic book industry anymore. And the way I see it with video games, the 80s and 90s were our time to freak out because a bunch of old men in suits <laughs> were sure that they have this all figured out. And guess who's all coming into power now? And I don't just mean politicians. I just mean the rest of the world. We grow up. We grew up on video games. We all turned out fine. Many of us are productive, wonderful parts of society and leaders of industry and leaders of men. I don't know what our big stigma will be. Maybe it's VR. Maybe it's something else. But when we're old men in suits... We're going to have some problem with what the young people are doing then. We've grown up with video games and they've grown up along with us. Though controversy still surrounds them, it's beginning to dissolve as people come to recognize games as a powerful storytelling medium. It's not just about entertainment anymore. Games can be beautiful and artistic, and they can move us emotionally. Thank you.